Hello everybody, welcome back to our Gospel from Graffiti video series. I'm here in rural Sligo on an old deserted farmstead. And you can see behind me here on the gable wall of the shed the painting of a calf. Now I'm not a farmer and whether it's a Hereford or a Belgian Blue I don't know. But maybe even a Frisian. If you're a farmer and you're watching the video send me a comment and let me know. But I want to read first of all from the Bible and again I should say initially that we give out these Bibles free the New Testament if you'd like one please contact us and we'll send you one out free of charge with pleasure I want to read in the book of the Hebrews in the New Testament Hebrews in chapter 9 and verse 12 he entered the most holy place once for all not by the blood of goats and calves but by his own blood having obtained eternal redemption now you're wondering probably what on earth is that all about well you'll have heard no doubt of a man called Abraham the founder of the Jewish nation the Israelis and Abraham left Ur of the Chaldees according to the Bible a pagan culture and God said to Abraham I'm going to make of you a nation that was the start that was the birth of Israel and to that nation God gave a system of sacrifice and rituals he gave them and gave them instructions to make this mobile worship center called the tabernacle as they traveled through the desert and they offered on altars lambs and bullocks and calves they made animal sacrifices and you might say what was all that about they had sacrifices they had priests and they had one high priest a chief priest if you like Aaron well you'll have played Monopoly I'm sure in the past and you'll be familiar with the little plastic houses and hotels and the Monopoly money of the board game and you realize now if you didn't back then as a younger person that the houses and the hotels and the money the Monopoly money were all symbolic of that which was real and just in the same way the sacrifices of the Old Testament that God gave Israel were symbolic of something much greater much more profound and something real they were pictures of a supreme sacrifice we've read here of the sacrifices offered by Aaron and it says here that this person in Hebrews chapter 9 he entered the most holy place once for all now that's different because every year Aaron the high priest had to bring animal sacrifices and the blood of animals into the most holy compartment of the tabernacle to make atonement to make appeasement for the sins of the nation he had to do it every year but yet we read here in this chapter about a person who entered the most holy place once for all that's different now to Aaron Aaron came in many times this person came in once who is this referring to the he here in the verse is Jesus Christ and on the cross of Calvary he offered that supreme sacrifice for sin forever now maybe you're listening to me today and you're saying why make such a big deal about sin why is sin so serious could not God just not as a loving God as a benevolent creator just forget about sin and just pretend it doesn't matter and bring everybody into heaven when life is over well let me let me put you if you like into a courtroom setting and let's think about the judge and the jury and the defendant there in the dock and they're guilty of crime maybe it's murder maybe it's financial embezzlement maybe it's maybe it's a crime of a sexual nature and you hear the victim impact statement read out and you realize how that crime has so devastatingly affected the person and families involved would you still say to me that sin is not all that important doesn't really matter very much you see there's something endemic in our nature that tells us that when a crime has been committed there must be a penalty and sin if you like is a crime against God the Creator you see God is not a cosmic force God is not some sort of energy in the system of the universe God is a real knowable intelligent almighty Creator and we have personally offended God by our sin and by our rebellion against his law and his commandments and you see sin deserves a penalty just as in real life sin deserves a penalty and Jesus Christ on the cross he took the penalty for sin the he here in the verse is not the high priest Aaron who had to come in time and time again on the day of atonement Yom Kippur and offer for the nation it says here in this verse he 
Christ entered the most holy place once for all, not with the blood of calves and of goats, but by his own blood. And on the cross of Calvary, the Lord Jesus Christ paid the supreme and ultimate sacrifice for sin. So the question today for you, viewer, is this. What are you going to do with the sacrifice of Christ? You see, the Bible speaks time and again about the necessity of repentance or changing our mind. Changing our mind about ourself, about our sin, about God, our creator, realizing that God is true, his word is true. But to acknowledge that means to acknowledge that I'm wrong. And that's very hard to do for many people, myself included. To acknowledge that we're wrong and we're guilty and we're sinners and we need salvation. And yet sin is serious. So serious that we, we think about what God had to do. And God sent his son to die on Calvary's cross. Now don't forget, lest you think about God and his son in terms of human relationships. You see, God exists eternally as three persons, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, each existing independently, eternally, and yet there's one God. So in a sense, God himself, in the person of his son, paid the price for sin. It's like the judge in the courtroom saying, paying the penalty himself. It's not the idea of a fa an earthly father giving his son in some sort of a sadistic, masochistic way. No, it's God himself paying the price for human sin. Listen again to the lovely verse. For he entered the holy place once for all. Notice that, you see, the sac sacrifice of Christ was once for all. You know, we can't re-offer the sacrifice of Christ. We can't reenact it. It was once for all, unlike the animal sacrifices of the Old Testament. Once for all, not by the blood of bulls and cows, but by his own blood. He entered in once, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Now, mind you, it's salvation and redemption only for those who trust Christ. You see, it says in John chapter 3, verse 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That's true. But it goes on to say that whoever believes in him, trusts him, will not perish, will not suffer the penalty for sin, will be, will be saved and have everlasting life. You see, it's only to those who trust Christ. The sacrifice of Christ lays a foundation, a basis whereby everybody could be in heaven and be saved, but it's only those who repent, change their minds, acknowledge the truth about God, and trust his son, Jesus Christ, for salvation. You know, to have Christ today is salvation. You see, salvation is not about following the dictates of a book you know I hold the Bible here in my hand but I'm not living by the dictates of a book oh I believe that God has revealed his truth to us through the Bible the Holy Bible but salvation is not knowing the Bible or living by a system of rules or going to a church or doing penance salvation is knowing a person trusting Christ personally you see you could take everything from me today you could take my car you could take my family you could take what money I have you could take my Bible away from me and leave me with physically nothing but yet you could never take Christ away from me you see I have Christ today he's risen he's in heaven he's in glory he's my savior I have him I've trusted him you see Jesus Christ said in John 14 I am the way the truth and the life no one comes to God except by me Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven and I wonder what you're going to do today with the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I hope there's somebody listening here today, and I appreciate you logging on. But you know, you'll take the time to read the Bible. Maybe send a request in for a New Testament. I'd gladly send you one out. And see what God has to say for himself in his word. Not to let a church or a pastor or a minister interpret the Bible. Read it for yourself. And read the verse we've read here in Hebrews. Chapter 9, he entered the holy place once for all, Jesus Christ, not with the blood of calves and of goats, but by his own blood he obtained eternal redemption. Do you want this eternal redemption today? Do you want this salvation? It could be yours by trusting Christ even just today. It's unlikely you'll see this calf as you drive by around Sligo. This is a very remote area. And mind you me, looking at the wall, the paint is weathering away. Maybe in a few more years the calf won't even be visible on the scable wall. But, you know, I'm glad to say that the word of God endures forever. And the salvation that God offers in Christ will endure forever. The Bible says now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Thanks for joining us. And we'll see you again soon in more videos. Thank you very much indeed.